Hello guys. So welcome to our, our new tutorial on C++ programming. In the last tutorial, we discussed about scope resolution operator, how we can use it, how we can use it to access global variables. So it was quite a new operator in C++ language that we need to understand. We needed to understand and we go through, through with that scope resolution operator. Actually, scope resolution operator can be used in many ways. Uh, one way is, as we know, that it is used to access global variable. Another use is that we can declare we we can declare the function in C++ program in our main program, but we can define any variable or function outside this main function using this scope resolution operator. So, will that we will study this scope resolution operator again in our upcoming tutorials. So let's focus on our next topic in C++ programming and this is one of the advantage of C++ language over C is that there is a concept of dynamic initialization. In C++ we can initialize variable at runtime. This is this is known as dynamic initialization. What that means? That means whenever we define any variable in C language like integer a equal 10 so we sometimes initialize value in the form of static static value for example the value that doesn't change that is fixed before the actual compilation start but in this in c++ programming there is an advantage is that that it uses the concept of dynamic initialization it means a variable can be initialized at runtime by using expressions instead of declaration just uh, look at this example for example suppose integer a a is a variable who's having a data type int is having value 10 so this is known as declaration means first we declare the var variable a and assign a value 10 so this is known as declaration the value of a won't change throughout his life cycle so this is known as declaration but in c++ programming we use sometimes dynamic initialization to make our uh, program work much better much efficient and here dynamic initialization work in this way suppose there is a variable a whose data type is int so here instead of defining a constant value to it we use expression instead of declaration like int a equal string length of any string so during runtime when you, your user will type any value or through our program we get any value of string then from that in the runtime a will be having its actual value till now we don't know what is the value of a we just we are using just an expression to get the value of a so this is known as dynamic initialization so for example suppose in our program we define an a variable average as a float and uh, there are two float values of average and sum so here during runtime average will get the value of sum divided by any variable i but at this very moment we don't know what is the value of average so instead of defining and declaring it with any constant value we just define it using expressions so this is known as dynamic initialization in c++ okay we'll see that thing in our upcoming tutorials in our program programming section so i guess you get to know what is dynamic initialization through it you're going through it so let me quickly remind you again c++ in c++ we can initialize a variable at runtime at runtime whenever we initialize any variable using expressions instead of declaration then that is known as dynamic initialization okay now our next topic is reference variable so what is a reference variable a reference variable in uh, let's put, uh, let's understand this in very simple language what is a reference variable a reference variable is just an alternate name for a, a previously defined variable suppose my name is akash my alternate name is ankit so my name ankit is a, actually a reference name to my name akash so it is just an alternative name it's, it's just an alternate name okay so a reference variable 
provides an alternate name for a previously defined variable. For example, if we make the variable sum a reference to the variable total, okay, if sum is the reference of the total variable, then sum and total can be used to represent that variable. In this, in this example, reference variable means that a variable uh, whose reference variable is just initialized will be same, will be equal to each other. So we can use it an alternative approach in corresponding values. In sometimes some place we can use sum, in other place we can use total just according to our needs. For example here we define total as float whose value is 100. Okay, now we are defining and declaring a reference variable here float and sum and sum means it is a reference variable and which is equal to total. So now sum will be equal to total. Whatever the value of total is, the sum will be having the same value. So in other words, if we change any value in sum, its changes will be reflected in total too. So just understand the concept in that way that reference variable is just an alternate name of a previously defined variable. Okay. So both the variable refer to the same data object in the memory. Here you can see total is having 100 value, sum is having total value. So here sum and total are equal. So they, these both are pointing to the same data object in the memory. Okay, that means the same. If whatever the value is, if we print out the statement like C out is equal to total, C out sum, both will print value 100. Okay, a pro tip to you that you should keep in your mind is that a reference variable must be initialized at the time of declaration. Here you can see when we are defining float and sum and sum here is a reference variable. So we define it. Now we need to declare it. It means we need to initialize it. We need, we need to assign that variable to some value during its declaration at the time of its declaration. So a reference variable must be initialized at the time of declaration. Got that? Okay, so C++ here you can see we are using float and and sum and we know that and is an address operator. Sometimes it's used for reference, sometimes it's used for address but C++ assigns additional meaning to the symbol and. Here and is not an address operator. Here and means that it is a reference to float. Here float and means and is a reference to float. Means whatever it's on the right side of the right side of this uh, operator and will be the reference to the float. Okay, for example, you can see here we are defining a variable int n who is taking up to 10 memory spaces. Here we are defining a reference variable like int and x. Okay, and x is a reference variable, we get to know that. So, we know that, we know one thing about reference variable that it should be initialized at the time of their, its declaration. So, and x is equal to some variable that is n. Okay, so here and x, that is reference variable is the reference of n. So, sometimes if we want to use x instead of n, they both be equal to each other, they both be pointing to the same value. Okay. So how we can use it in our program, suppose in this form, we define a function void fun whose parameter is a reference variable means the function will be having a reference variable means an alternate name of any variable. In our function, there is a variable x who's equal to x plus 10. That, that means its value will be in, uh, incremented by 10, increased by 10. Okay, now we need a main function in our program. So our main function is having, uh, we, defi we declared and defined a variable m whose value is equal to 10. Now we are calling the function fun, okay, with the parameter m. Okay, so now the dynamic initialization occurred. How? 
as we can we can see we are calling the function fun here we passing the, we are passing the parameter m equal to 10 so it will directly call it don't go to the fun function part here here we get to see that m is equal to and x means integer and x that is, that is integer uh, reference variable x is equal to m so the value of x will be 10 and when our function is executing the statement x is equal to x plus 10 x plus 10 then the value will be equal to 20 so the very uh, the value that will be printed on our output screen will be 20 so in this way dynamic initialization occurs okay so this type of function calling like the way we called it the function fun with passing the parameter m who's having a reference variable x this type of reference this type of function calling is known as call by reference so this is known as call by reference when we are calling any function by using its reference so this is known as call by reference this is known as a reference variable so i hope you learned some of the concepts of this reference variable and hope that you understand some of the concepts here okay now i want to give you two tips or it's just a single tip this time one tip instead of using backslash n for next line you can use a c++ manipulator that is and l a n d l instead of using n backslash n if you think that's so difficult then you can use endl it is a c++ manipulator so thanks for this tutorial if you like this video please like it subscribe it and share it and please comment below if you find any problem in the reference variable or the first topic that i discussed with you what is dynamic initialization of variables so i'll see you in the next tutorial thank you